Now I want to talk about the family of cubes again and talk about the boundary of a 4D cube. The boundary of a 1D cube is the two vertices that you could stab yourself on on the tips of that line segment. A 0D cube, by the way, has no boundary at all. That doesn't make any sense. The boundary of a 2D cube, which is really just a square, is the four vertices and the four edges around the outside of it. And the boundary of a 3D cube, a regular solid cube, is everything around the outside. So all eight vertices, all 12 edges, all six faces. Now something that we can do is we can think about the boundary of an object and we can kind of cut it apart with scissors so that we can view it in a dimension below. This is important because we will try to cut open the boundary of a 4D cube and view it in the dimension below, which is 3D world, our world. The boundary of a square, a 2D cube, is the four vertices and the four edges. Now, if you snipped that with scissors, if you imagined it made of wire and snipped with scissors, you could cut it open and view it as living in a 1D world line land, just a long infinite line where you can only go up and down. Now what we did to open this up was we snipped it once. These two big fat dots on the top and bottom are actually supposed to get attached together. But how can they find each other to be reattached? If we want to reassemble this thing, how can they find each other within line land? They just can't. The only way we can join the two green dots, the big dot on the bottom and the big dot on the top, is to leave 1D world. We have to go left or right. And that's a dimension that doesn't exist in 1D world. So that top line segment has to move out of the universe in order to join with the other dot on the bottom. And then when those two green dots connect, it turns into like a wire square that you can fill in with 2D area. This is a story that I'm going to tell two more times. The boundary of a 3D cube can be cut open and viewed in 2D world. Remember, 2D world is flat land. So it's like this cross shape is in your computer screen. It cannot come out of the computer screen. It cannot go in. So it's perfectly flat and it's perfectly thin. We cannot reassemble this shape unless we leave 2D world and enter 3D world. If this were a cardboard box that we were trying to assemble, I bet you can imagine the four flaps on the top sides and bottom coming up towards your face and then taping those flaps together to make an empty box shape. And in fact, that very bottom square actually becomes the top of the box, if you're thinking of it that way. I've highlighted and labeled two edges because those two edges labeled A would actually get taped together as we're assembling this box. And similarly, these two edges would come up out of Flatland into 3D World towards our faces and get labeled. They would get taped together as we're assembling the boundary of the 3D cube. Similarly, these other pairs of edges would get glued together, and these pairs of edges would get glued together. And then finally, we would have the boundary of a 3D cube. And so here's the third story. The boundary of a 4D cube can be partially cut open, and then if we do that, it can live in our actual physical world. And here's an image of it. It's made out of eight different solid 3D cubes. I hope you can see that six of them sort of make a cross shape. And then there's one cube that comes out towards our faces. And then there's an eighth cube that goes behind. It adds up to eight. Just like with the other steps, as hard as it is to really conceive of, we cannot reassemble this boundary fully unless we leave 3D world and enter 4D world. The reassembly I'm about to describe to you will seem impossible. And in 3D world, it is. But in 4D world, it's perfectly possible. More analogies. This whole section for me is analogies. In order to reassemble a 2D cube boundary, the boundary of a square, we attach 
vertices or zero D parts. In order to reassemble the boundary of the 3D cube, we attach 1D parts or edges. In order to reassemble the boundary of the 4D cube, we have to attach 2D parts or faces. Now, can you see, I mean, if we're looking at this like hypercross shape with eight cubes literally physically glued together, well, that's two faces to one already, right? That's, that's what you would do if you were gonna glue two cubes together. You would grab two of the faces, slap some super glue on there and go. These faces that I've highlighted in yellow are two more faces that would get glued together in 4D World. If the cubes were stretchy, you could probably pull that off in 3D World, but the other ones, you can't really get through all of them. So we're going to be attaching faces. Now going around the object, the pairs of faces that are exposed actually get attached. So here's another pair that kind of make an L shape and they would get glued together. And then going around the top and the sides and the bottom, these L-shaped pairs of faces will get taped together. The very tippy top face on top of this hypercross and the face on the very, very bottom will also get glued together. The hardest ones to see are that the ones on the very outsides of the hypercross shape actually get glued to the side faces of that very bottom cube that's holding the whole team on its back. Just like with the 3D cube, just like with the square, by the time we get done with this process, every 2D face has a buddy. Every face got taped to some other face. One last analogy before I fill out a table for you. The 2D cube, the square, has area. That's what it means to be 2D. And that area is completely surrounded by a 1D boundary. Imagine that square surrounded by the four edges and the four vertices. The 3D cube, regular cube, has volume that is completely surrounded by that 2D boundary, by the parts you can touch. Therefore, it's true in all the other dimensions too. The 4D cube has a kind of 4D volume. We usually call it hypervolume or something dumb like that. That hypervolume is completely surrounded by the 3D boundary. That's why it's so important that all of the faces get buddies. These cubes wrap around each other in 4D space and then you inject it with this magical hypervolume and bam, you've got a 4D cube. So here we are. We've got a table of numbers of vertices, edges, faces, fillings, and hyperfillings of cubes of different dimensions. And so far we know that in that first row a vertex just has a vertex and nothing else. In dimension one you have an edge which has two vertices on either end. The square has four vertices, four edges, one face. The cube, eight vertices, 12 edges, six faces, and then the volume piece. But what's going on with that bottom row? So I needed to lecture about boundary because here are the formulas that help you understand where the answers come from. I showed you images that argued that the boundary of a 4D cube is made up of eight different 3D cubes. Now looking at this image of eight 3D cubes just sitting there minding their own business, those features add up to 8 times 8 vertices, 8 times 12 edges, and 8 times 6 faces. But then we start assembling this thing. First of all, when we reassemble this boundary, notice that we always attach two faces together at a time, which is why I'm going to take 8 times 6 and divide it by 2 to get the number of faces in a hypercube. Those are the 2D faces. Now, take a look at the highlighted edge, or at any other edge, really. Notice that three different cubes touch each edge. With the edge that I've highlighted in yellow there towards the front, the very top cube touches it, the very frontmost cube touches it, and the secret eighth cube that you can't see also touches it. And those are the only three. So it's sort of like it's always three edges to one, three to one, three to one. Because of that, 
I'm going to take the 8 by 12 and divide it by 3 to get the number of edges in a hypercube. Finally, I highlighted a single vertex in the sky that's kind of like in the little armpit of this graphic. Can you tell that the topmost cube touches it, the frontmost cube touches it, the rightmost cube touches it, and that top secret eighth cube in the very center of the shape also touches it. That's four different cubes that have vertices that are touching that highlighted yellow vertex. Going around this shape, it will always be four to one. Four cubes sharing that vertex. So four vertices get glued together at a time. That's why I have to take eight times eight and divide it by four and that's guaranteed to be the number of vertices in a hypercube. Which means this last row of the table is completely filled out. 16, 32, 24, 8, and 1.